uh, there's a review here, and we could either, we've got 35 minutes left, we could either go through this together right now, and that's going to be the end of class, but that's going to be a lot of redundancy, or we could uh, move forward. I'd say we move forward. It's good. Yeah. And then this this will just be your homework. And I have the answers for all this available, so I could uh, I could make those answers available if you guys want. Just um, You all have my phone number. <laughs> I shouldn't do this while I'm recording. I should maybe write it down on the wall. <laughs> I'll give it to you later. Remind me. And then you can just send me a text message and say, can you send me the answers? And I'll totally send you the answers. No big deal. And then you could read everything I tell you in here. So let's look at, at 9. <clears throat> but, you know, try to, try to figure it out with your own head because that's where, that's where you build muscles when you struggle. So just more stuff on documentation, just making sure that that's solid. You know, finding you know different resources and getting help, and and then uh, a little bit of information about variadic and Bacchus nor form, and 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 saying documentation there again. And so what you're going to leave, and I, I wanted to, I'm kind of giving you the review at the beginning. This is also the review, but I, I just changed it to preview. But this is what you're going to get from this presentation. This is kind of a long presentation, and I'm just going to skip over all the. Well, I guess I'll blaze through them. But resources and learning GoLang from GoLang. So the resources are just links. Those are live links you can click on to resources I found valuable for learning GoLang. So an introduction to programming in Go. Well, you'll see them in a second. And then if you want to learn GoLang from GoLang.org, which is the official website, right? And by the way, GoLang is open source. So even though I refer to it as Google, Google's GoLang or whatever, it's backed by Google. It originated in Google, but it's open source. Uh, so you could actually submit. Right? And say, hey, add this to the SDK, and if it's awesome, they'll hire you, probably. And you'll be working at Google. Uh, Daniel? <laughs> uh, so learning from golang.golang. This wasn't clear to me, like, what's the path. But when you dig through, you first do the install, and there's some instruction there. And then you look at the language spec. And then after that, you go through whatever welcome one is. I think that's the tour. And then you do uh, that second one, and then Effective Go, and then there's a blog at golang.org, which is awesome. And so then the other things we're going to look at is we'll look at Go Help, and we've already seen that. So Go Help, you can put in a command, and Go Help, you can put in a topic. How many people are with me on that? We saw that. All right, cool. And, uh, and then, like, Go Help ENV, right? And then that took me into talking about variadic, so we're going to look a little bit about variadic and BNF which sounds like it's new to some of you. And then we have Go Help Packages, Go Help Build, and Go Help Install, just some examples. So all of that is just looking at uh, you know, uh, using help. And then documentation, again, just sort of godoc.org, golang.org, and godoc. And then some examples using godoc, uh, like godoc-source, format, print line, right? And godoc-source, format, and godoc-http, equals colon 6060. We'll actually start a web server and show you all the documentation uh, so you can be on an airplane without Wi-Fi, though I think that's less and less a problem. And you could access all the documentation as a website by running that command. Um, and just some different commands there. Godoc dash under dash Q reader. I can't remember what that does. And then when you close your server on a Mac in the terminal, Control C. So if you start a server, you can get out of it by Control C with Unix. It's for Windows 2. Windows 2? Q. So uh, Go Resources, Introduction. This is a really good book. And you can see the link for that in the bottom right. Bootcamp videos of you know the training this summer. Go by example is a really helpful resource. Like so if you need, oh gosh, how do I do this again? How do I do, you know, uh, struct and you could just type go by example struct and it takes you to a page that has really good examples really brief good explanation so that's a great resource plural site has really nice trainings if uh, you want to take a whole training there's a tour of go here which you could work through and um, well that's the official golang website and then here's the tour and then there's a go newsletter which is cool to sign up for so you can sign up for that by following that link right down there and uh, what is this Oh, this is a training I haven't gone through yet, but I stumbled across it. I thought, hey, it might be worth checking out. So you might check that out. So if you learn GoLang from GoLang, you know, that's where we're at is the red part there. You would do that part, then this part, 
and then this part, and then this part, and then this part, and then this part, and then this part. And then getting help, <clears throat> moving into that area. Um, a little bit of review, like go help, go doc. Why doesn't that work? Because it's not one of the commands, right? Go help takes a command, and go doc's not in there, right? So you can only put in the commands, like, you know, go help tool, or go help list, but there's no go doc in the command list, right? Um, so that would be something you could try on your own. And there's the ENV, and then we have var dot dot dot, and we learned those brackets mean it's optional, right? And so I could have just typed go ENV, and that would have done it, but it looks like I could also add some variable there, and I could add those dot dot dots. That's variadic in Go, and variadic means you could add multiple things, and so that means I could add multiple variables. And there's a link here to go variadic right there. And uh, you read about it. I think I have a slide of it. So to understand this, you need to understand both BNF and variadic. How many people don't know BNF? How many people do know BNF? OK. So uh, you know, it's just the syntax for how do you describe a language. And it's created by somebody. So their name is somehow connected to it. And you could uh, look at, this is, these are great. So uh, I'm just going to bring this up. i got to first kill my sound. We could, we could actually spend all the rest of class on BNF, but watch this uh, stuff right here. There's a really great description of doing grammar in programming. And then, uh, you know, like how do you, how do you create a specification for a language? And then how to use BNF to do that. So those are those first two links. Highly recommend it, right? And uh, and then so these these are uh, these are on YouTube, and this is the actual links to the stuff on Udacity. So if that interests you, you're like, oh, that looks like really cool training. You could find the training by clicking this stuff. And then this guy has a really great description: 0612 TV of BNF, and you can look at Wikipedia's BNF and eBNF. But after you do all that. Uh, you know, what you'll see is like, oh, okay, there's just some notation. And you can see those brackets over there are an option, right? Like you could have options. But there's a few other pieces of notation. And, uh, and when, you read, when you read documentation, so let's just see if, you know, we could see some. And so here's an example of BNF syntax. Right, so an expression can take either a unary expression or an expression, binary op expression. I'm not sure what the dot does. I could look that up. And so for here, I could substitute unary expression, right? And so that means I could put in either a primary expression or the. So if I do a primary expression, I'd go find what that is, and I just clicked on it, so it's at the top of my screen. And here's a primary expression. I could put something like that in. And so once you understand the syntax, you do this substitution thing to sort of figure out how's the language put together. So that's BNF. So variadic, you will see dash dot 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 like this for params. And, uh, and for args, it'll be the dots afterwards. So you can use those dots in two ways. And before it, it means, you know, hey, I, you, because it's a function declaration, I take multiple parameters. And then if I'm, you know, uh, like if I said, dot, 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 int, I'm going to take multiple ints, right? And then if I, in the args, I'm passing in a bunch of stuff, something that has like a bunch of ints, like I pass in a slice of ints there, I might do, you know, dot, dot, dot after my variable, which was a slice of ints, say, hey, there's a whole bunch of stuff here, right? Use it all. So that's, that's what the dots mean. And so here's an example from the documentation. And the first one is a parameter. It's in a function declaration saying, you know what? I'll take unlimited number of strings here. And then here I have a slice of strings in the bottom, right? And you know, that slice of strings is just like a list in some languages, right? And, uh, and that list has, you know, multiple entries. And, uh, and so I'm passing in to that function, um, you know, the stuff that's in there. And there's multiple strings in there. I could have also written those differently just to take a slice of strings and pass in a slice of strings. And then I wouldn't have to use the dots. But that's one way you could write it right there. But that's what those dots mean when you see it. Very attic.
I really like uh, Go Help's description of packages. So many commands apply to a set of packages. So you could read, well, usually packages is a list of import paths. An import path that is rooted path or that begins with a dot or dot dot element is interpreted as a file system path and denotes the package in that directory. Otherwise, the import path p denotes the package found in the directory. Yeah, you know, great, great to read about. Three reserved names for paths: main, all, standard. Can't use those in your unique namespaces. Okay, for your package names. And more stuff about. Um, what do we go help package here? Yeah, maybe a little bit too much detail there, but worth looking at. I like the go help descriptive packages really well. Can you find online the same information we found at Go Help topic at the terminal to learn about packages? So I couldn't find that same information that I found at Go Help by typing in Go Help packages at the terminal. Right? I couldn't find that anywhere else online. So it was only here that I was able to read this about packages the way it was written here. Just kind of interesting. And so here's another one. Could I find uh, this this deal? Just go help, right? Which is, you know, the go help deal. Could I find that online? I couldn't find that online either. So that's only accessible right there, so far as I found it. If you discover differently, let me know. So some information it seems is only available at the terminal. Finding information sometimes requires digging around. So let me ask you a question. Where where can you dig? What are the places that you've learned so far to dig around for information? Okay, golang.org. I, I prefer godoc.org, but, but golang.org too, yeah. And golang.org will have the language spec and effective Go, so those are both good places. And then godoc.org will have documentation. And then go help at the terminal is another place. And you can look, oh, is this a command or is this a topic? I could actually read about it, go help. So, uh, then, you know, here we go into using, uh, wow, we're still way up there. So here's go help build, tells us about build. Go help install, tells us about install. And now we're down to the documentation, and we've seen that. That seems to be like a big point. And uh, we've already seen all that. And, and go doc at the terminal, right, and try running some of this different stuff at the terminal. And... Um, one thing I found is uh, there's, you see up there, tools, golang.org, x tools, command, go doc, right? And things sometimes migrate from tools to the standard SDK library, right? So go types package has been moved to the standard library from the tools repository. Uh, it's just something that's kind of interesting. So I know this is a lot of detail, but um, can I find go doc at the terminal? Couldn't find that information at the terminal. That was talking about Godoc. <clears throat> I feel like this one is almost better just for you to read through on your own. That's kind of cute, cool. You could query Godoc. So you could go to Godoc and then just do a dash Q, and it'll find everything in the documentation related to whatever you typed in. So if I wanted to find all the stuff I, I wanted about readers, I'd do that command, Godoc dash Q reader. Do you know this one? No, I had to look up dash Q. But, uh, but that's kind of cool because it's readers and writers become a thing later, and uh, no one. Like, hey, what are all my readers? What are all my writers? 
And so if I want to find RAND, right, I could do RAND, and, and I have different RAND options that come up. And I could see, okay, these are my RAND options. All right, so check that one out on your own, and we could uh, review that one more.